Hello and welcome to another video from Natasha Lee and everywhere at the moment I am seeing bubble flower or candy ball nails. I was desperate to get my teeth into this and have a go. These are so fun and surprisingly easy to create. Stay tuned to find out how. This week I've reverted back to my original way of filming and you will have to bear with me as I am a bit poorly and so my voice keeps going so I hope you can hear me okay. For this look we're going to need a needle point dotting tool. Now if your dotting tool has a bump at the end of the nib then don't worry I'm going to show you how to carefully remove that and don't worry because it will make it even easier using this dotting tool for fine points afterwards. Using a 240 nail file I'm just turning the dotting tool as I file. Now this did have a previous little dot on the top but I have already filed it off to create this look and then going in with a 1200 file I'm just going to finish off that filing. Now I tried some different types of gel to do this and I found this skyscraper building gel in glass was the easiest. I found my Give Me Strength from Magpie was a little too thin and I found my foundation skyscraper gel was too thick but this one, the glass, was absolutely perfect. And I've put links to all of the products used in this video in the description for you to be able to purchase them too. Begin by dipping the nib of your dotting tool into the gel and just try and get a little blob of gel on the end and then turn around that dotting tool to make it into a perfect round circle. Keep turning it as you put it into your lamp to cure and this is to stop it sort of going to one side more than the other. We want that perfect symmetrical blob at the end of the dotting tool. Next I'm going to be using some iridescent caviar beads and my Shelly Dust from Magpie and this is just to add some extra sparkle and we're going to put that cured gel with its sticky layer intact straight into the caviar beads and you can see it's sticking to that cured tacky layer and then I'm dipping it straight down into my Shelly and that gives it this beautiful shimmery sparkle at the end. I've used the lid of my gel pot to get some of the old gel off the lid and I'm applying that with a fine detail brush very very carefully just to hold those caviar beads in place without actually moving any of them around. We sort of want to just encase them in the gel. Once you're happy with the shape and you've turned it round to get it symmetrical, pop it into your lamp to cure. Next I'm going to be using one of my favourite colours ever and this is Woe Nelly from Magpie and using a detail brush and this one is from Uber Chic. I'm just going straight onto that cured gel and I'm applying sort of a circle on one side and then a circle on the other. These are the start of the petals. Make sure you take the gel polish right to the bottom of that dotting tool and from the top I found that it looks best if you try and do the lines a bit straight. Once you're happy with the look, cure in your lamp before going in back into the gel. Don't worry about removing that sticky layer, we're just going to pop it straight into the gel. Now we want to try and avoid bubbles, so I find the best way to do this is pop it carefully straight down. Don't wiggle it around too much, but pop it down far enough into the gel, but that gel sort of closes down onto the dotting tool behind your blob or your bubble. And when you're happy with that, pull it out and let the excess sort of drip down for a second. I found if you had too much gel on this ball, then what happened is as it built up, it magnified too much and separated the petals. So I found that just touching the excess twice onto the jar of the gel and then turning it round to get an even distribution was just the perfect amount. Pop it into your lamp to cure, ensuring that you continue to spin that dotting tool. Then I'm going to apply two more petals on each side, but on the opposite sides to what we did previously. When you're happy, pop it in your lamp to cure and then we're going to go back into that gel again. And you can see I just push it down until it sort of closes onto the dotting tool at the base. Pull it out and let the excess drip for a moment to one side and then wipe that excess once on the side of the jar and then twice. And then just hold it in place for a moment for it to settle before you cure. After the first two layers of applying two petals, we're going to start applying three, but make sure you bring those petals down lower than the other petals, otherwise it will start to cover them as you build up the design. And you can see I went too high up on this petal here, so I kept this in so I could show you that instead of curing it, I just wiped it off with a pad dipped in isopropyl alcohol. I got the ball nice and clean before I went back in again with another petal, and this time I went lower with it. Try and go opposite to the previous petals that you've applied. When you're happy with the look, just simply cure. Once it's cured, we're going to go back in with gel again and we keep doing this to build up the look, but I'm going to show you it completely on this first one so you can see what happens as you're going along. I do find it really, really helps to let that gel drip and then wipe it twice on the side of the jar as it really helps with that design and I tried a number of different methods before I settled on this one. 
Remember to spin it round to let that gel settle. And it's starting to look really, really good now. This is where I started to get really excited. I wanted some more gel towards the top of the rose, so I turned it upside down and spun it round before I cured it. Now we're going to continue going on with three petals at a time using our gel colour and try and apply those petals over the previous joins of the other petals, if that makes sense. So apply one to cover the joins of the previous petals and it starts to really build up that look. But remember to keep going lower and lower with those petals around the ball so you're not covering up the previous detailing. Cure and go back in again with that gel. And you can see I'm needing to push a little bit harder to get it to join at the base where the dotting tool is. When you're happy with it settled, then pop it in your lamp to cure before going in with another layer of colour now. You can see we're almost done at this point because I've almost achieved the look that I was after. Now people are calling these sort of bubble roses or candy balls. They do actually really remind me of peonies though and they are my favourite flower ever. So I'm super happy with that look. And you can see I'm going lower and very straight with those petals down the side of that ball. Try and make sure that you keep the gel very pigmented at the tips of the petals because that helps keep a really sharp image when it's cured and the next layer of gel is applied over the top. And also I find it important just to apply the colour around the base of the ball as it helps add some definition. Remove any fluffy bits before you cure and apply into that gel again. Now this will be my last layer of the gel because the ball is getting quite big. I don't want it to be too big on the nail but I wanted to have enough detailing that I felt happy with it. You can see it's really effective. The more layers that we apply, the more magnified the look is. And I do have to say a big thank you to 10 Little Canvases because I watched her tutorial before having a go myself and tweaking it ever so slightly just to make myself a little bit happier with the effect. Once you've cured that gel, I'm going to go in with my top coat and apply it over the whole ball nice and evenly. And once you're happy with that, you can cure that in your lamp as well. And once it's cured, taking a pad dipped in isopropyl alcohol, I'm going to clean off that sticky layer off the outside of the ball. And this is where it gets really exciting because it's hard to believe that what you've created is something so intricate and pretty. And I've really zoomed in four times the amount to see this, but look at it. And those caviar beads in the centre, even though they're tiny and magnified and gorgeous. To remove it from the dotting tool, simply hold the ball, twist the dotting tool and then pull it off. It is surprisingly simple. And look at that lovely detailing of the petals. The Magpie gel polishes work really well with this because they're so pigmented you can get away with one layer. I'm going to produce another flower but smaller in a different colour. So I'm beginning exactly the same way, getting that dot. But before I cure it, I'm going to actually apply an SS3 Swarovski crystal. Now see if you spot my mistake here. You'll discover it later on. But we're going to apply that crystal straight onto the wet gel before I cure in my lamp. And once it's cured, we're going to dip straight into that gel again to encase it and cure again. Then I'm going in with Magpie, Cat Got The Cream. And we're doing exactly the same thing again, but I'm going to speed this up for you to show it. Let me know in the comments down below if you've spotted my mistake yet. We're going to discover it very soon. And I felt like an absolute idiot. So again, we're doing two layers of two petals before I go in with three petals, keeping them going down lower. And once I've applied enough layers, we're applying our top coat before we cure. And we can just see that lovely little Swarovski crystal in the centre, just sparkling away. It's so pretty. However, I can't get it off the dotting tool. I tried, and I tried, and I really tried, and I was able to spin it, and I couldn't understand why I got it off the last time so easily. And this time, it would not give way. And I started thinking, what have I done wrong? I had to actually do it off camera to be able to finally pull it off. That's when I realised, instead of using this end, I'd use the end with a dot on. I was an idiot. But I did get it off in the end, so it is possible with a bit of brute force. This one is a lovely little off-white one. It's so pretty. Using my e-file, and there's links to this one in the description with a discount code, I'm just going to take the tip off there, where it's been applied to the dotting tool. I'm using a fine ceramic bit to do this, and all I'm doing literally first is squaring off the base before I'm actually going in and starting to create a sort of concave. And that's because I want it to go against the nail nice and cleanly. I went to do the same to the little one, but I had a slight problem. As you'll see in just a moment, it was a slippery little sucker. And I struggled to hold on to it, and this is what happened in slow-mo. It literally disappeared out of my finger at such a rapid speed that I had to pull all the cupboards out in my office to find it before I did and did the same thing again. 
Now I'm applying this detailing to the ring finger so I'm going back in with some of that skyscraper glass and I'm applying it to the nail and then applying my larger ball where I'm happy. It does slip around a little bit so I popped it in my lamp to cure it before I went in and applied the little one as well. Pop it on, get it into place again with that nice concave underside because it's much easier and when you're happy with its position cure it in your lamp before going on to add your extra detailing. Now I'm just going to add some extra gel either side and what I wanted to do was add a little sparkle but also add some leaves. So when I had a look on my shelves in my office I found these fabulous 3D Swarovski crystals. I don't normally use ones that aren't flat back, I bought these ones by mistake because they weren't flat back crystals, they've been sat there doing nothing but they worked perfectly for this design. In that wet gel I moved them around until I was happy and then I simply flash cured. I applied some more gel and I was going to start building up this image and I decided what would be really pretty with this colour scheme would be to do a combination of pearls in different sizes and also Swarovski crystals in AB crystal. I've used a variety of SS9, SS5 and SS3 Swarovski crystals and I just mixed them up with some of my pearls. And once I was happy with the placement, I went back with my iridescent caviar beads and tried a couple of different ways to apply them. First I did it with my crystal katana and it was sort of just too much for pain to be honest with you, it was slow. So then I had this little scoop so I tried scooping onto it that way and that kind of worked a lot better. It was much more efficient to get them on and I just sort of sprinkled them wherever I wanted because I knew that I could actually detail it afterwards. In the uncured gel, pat them into place using your finger. Adding a bit more gel, I added some more detailing and this also helps to hold those flowers in place. Now the great thing about these flowers compared to normal 3D flowers is that normal 3D flowers can actually get very dirty and catch on clothing and things like that, but these ones don't. Using a pad dipped in isopropyl alcohol after curing, wipe off any excess sticky layer. And there we have our beautiful design and those crystals and pearls help anchor those bubble flowers onto the nail. I'm surprised how much I love these. They do weigh a little bit more than normal 3D flowers but not a massive amount and the smaller you do them the less they'll weigh. These reminded me so much of those paperweights you used to get in like the 90s. I'm that old, I remember them. And just to give you an idea of the nail art looks I'd use on the other fingers to complement it, here are some ideas for you. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I look forward to coming back to you next week and hopefully I will have my voice back because it will certainly be a lot easier doing these videos. Thank you very much for watching. Please don't forget to click subscribe and hit that teeny tiny little bell next to the subscribe icon so you always get notified of when I upload. Take care everyone and I will see you all very, very soon.